this, what would you say your biggest challenge has been getting you to where you are currently? Oh, uh, hope. People don't talk about how hard hope is. To live in that place where you're like, it's gonna happen tomorrow, it's gonna happen tomorrow, it's gonna happen tomorrow, is a very hard place for people because sometimes it lets you go, I can't, I, I quit. So a lot of them, so I've been doing stand-up since 2009, but I've been acting since I was a kid. And I've been singing since I was a kid. And I have a theater degree. But y'all know me as a comic. So now all this work that I did, and I used to do musicals, I've done children's shows, I sang, I was in an improv group, I did all of these other things, but y'all know me as a comic and a correspondent on the show. So now all of these things I did since I was seven years old, I have to now reintroduce everybody to. But if I had lost hope and didn't start, because I started doing stand-up because somebody told me I was a comic. It wasn't something that I chose to do. I just happened to be good at something, so someone saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And so that was the biggest challenge for me to go, okay, I have a theater degree. I've never been on stage and been myself and said my own words. So getting into stand-up was one of the hardest things for me because I'd never been myself on stage. I knew how to perform. I knew how to find my light. I knew how to plant my feet. I knew how to do, I knew all of the trappings. I'd done on stage 900-seat theater with no microphone and sang to the back of a room. I can perform, but it not as me. So that was the hardest part of the whole process, going, okay, I have to be Dulce. I haven't done that before. So that was the hardest part into that, and also listening to my mother. <laughs> because a comic told me in 2007 that I should do stand-up, and I didn't listen to him. But I started when I was supposed to. You see what I'm saying? So you get things when you're supposed to, which is always hard to hear. But in 2009, I... And once again, on an unemployment, look at God. And I was taking a sketch comedy class and I got laid off from a job. And the comic Big Kenny is like, again, come take my stand up class. And I was like, Unc, I don't have a job. I can't afford the $300 class. And he's like, You're supposed to do this. I won't charge you for the class. And then I couldn't decide what to do. And my mother told me, because Big Kenny had been inviting us to shows for two years. He's like, you have to do this, you have to do this. I was like, nah, 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 I'm good. And then my mother came up to me one day before the class started, and she said she had a dream that the whole world was laughing at me. <laughs> and she didn't understand what it meant. She was like, why are people laughing at my daughter? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> and then she said she prayed on it, and she was like, oh, my daughter's a comedian. So because of my mother, and I didn't talk about this for a long time because he used to piss comics off. Um, when I took a stand-up class and my mother supported my choice to do stand-up. <laughs> um, a lot of comics don't get that feedback from their family. Um, and so I did it. And so May 12th will be my stand-up anniversary. And if someone can do math, that's what, 14, 15 years? Thank you, gracias. I went to school in Georgia, so I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> um, but Gwinnett County, so, this, you know, I did okay, but, you know, I can't... The sixes and multiplication are funky. Um, and so, yeah, on the 12th, it'll be 14 years. But I threw a lot of things from just like, um, I'm not sure. I moved to LA with suitcases. I moved here with suitcases. And now I'm moving, you know, and it's like, so now you're moving, it's, you have to just go, I will be okay. But for me, the hardest part is hoping is I want to be a mother and have children, and I don't have that in my life. So the same hope that I applied to work, I now have to figure out to apply to this other thing. And that's even harder. Because I knew what to do to be successful in my career. I don't know how to hog tie some man. <laughs> so, and that's when I, uh, the Lord gave me my ministry um, <laughs> of No More Broke Dick. And, um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm a, the hardest part of any of this is hope, because you have to believe in you more than anybody else, and you have to love you more than anybody else.